selection a good year, I think. Um, we, if you look at the goals and targets we set, we wanted to have a decent cup run, and we had that. And, and um, we wanted to have um, you know, a playoff fight at the end of the season, and, and we more than did that because we actually achieved um, you know, fifth place and getting into the playoffs. So overall, I think we, we achieved the goals that us as a sort of tight-knit group in the changing room set ourselves. Um, Hopefully we, we overachieved in terms of perhaps the club's ambition, um, but I'm sure the club's ambition will change next year um, as a result of that. So, yeah, it's, um, it was a pleasing season. It was obviously very eventful, you know, COVID like full on at the start of the year and then injuries really were the sort of big feature of the first three or four months really, especially that did improve slightly, didn't it? Do you feel if um, without those... I mean, it's fair to say, I think if you'd had the same form like we had from end of November to end of the season, you would have walked the league, wouldn't we? So uh, any, any sort of uh, slight disappointment there? That I think you can always look back and say, what if? Um, you know, I dare say Stone Market are thinking, well, if we had the form we had in the first half of the season and we didn't tail off, then, then they'd have been up there as well. And So I think, you know, every, everyone will have um, regrets and, and parts of the season where they look back upon But I think that the key thing is you learn from it. I think that our recruitment, I know that will come on to during the summer, it is around trying to make sure that that doesn't reoccur. Um, and that's not just recruitment, that's in terms of our pre-season programme, our set-up, um, the work we're doing and the players are doing currently to make sure that they're in the best condition they can be. So it's about really learning from that rather than looking back too much. Um, and making sure it doesn't doesn't repeat, and, and we have a, a, a full consistent season, as opposed to kind of like, like you said, a poor sort of first third of the season and a good second two thirds. Yeah, I mean, although that, like I say, the first third of the season was you know not as good as we wanted, punctuated in those league games was that cut run for the club and big crowds we got for them games, and that just brings such a buzz to the place having a cup run. Despite wanting a better league run next year, early on, another cup run. Yeah, you know, I think, you, know you can't you can't blame kind of um, overworking players and things. That are you know you hear a lot of Premier League managers talk about burnout and all those types of things and too many games. Like, load of rubbish, in, in my opinion. I think that um, players at our level um, can deal with those demands. Um, it's just more about a cup run, as you say, can be great for the fans and great for galvanising clubs and all those types of things. And it's a fantastic thing to be on as a player, but it can um, unwittingly take the focus off the league. And I think that's possibly what it done early on, um, because you know once we'd got those cup runs out of the way, you know we were able to go right now. Let's really, really focus on one game at a time in the league. And I think that's where our form really picked up. And we were able to kind of shoot up the league from there. Okay, um, and of course, not forgetting that this league is it's got to be one of the toughest things to get for. Oh, it's, inc it's incredibly competitive league. Um, you could see by some of the results, even towards the end of the season, you know, some of the teams right down the bottom beating teams, you know, like your Averleys and Snow Markets and, and teams like that who are, who are right up the sharp end. So, no game is an easy game. You know, I know we had probably Romford who who, who who didn't have the best of seasons this year, but um, you know, no disrespect to them, but them aside, it, it was a it was a league that was extremely competitive and and will continue to be next year, no doubt. Yeah, um, so any sort of personal highlights of the season? I know I've got a few. But um, <laughs> you must have a few. No, I think for for me, um, just that we achieved the goal at the end of the day. I think we have a bit of a thing where we try not to get too high as a group and not too low in the low moments. And and I think for me, just achieving the goal at the end of it in terms of reaching the playoffs was was the biggest achievement for, for me personally because anyone can win a 90 minute game of football. Whereas if you can, you can achieve your goal over a full season, it, it really does sort of signify that you've achieved properly as opposed to just individual successes that can come along the way. So for me, yeah, it was, it was the overall success of the season. Okay. Um, how does that work where you're obviously 100 miles an hour through 
the season, come into the playoffs like we did, made it, and then all of a sudden you're like shuddering hole you know, after that. How do you, you know, how, how, how do you cope with that? How do you go from 100 miles an hour to zero? Um, I don't go to zero. Uh, my wife keeps me very, very busy at home. <laughs> no, she, it's, it's strange, certainly, and, and I know I found it strange as a player um, in that regard because, as you, as you say, you, you, everything, particularly getting into the playoffs, everything in those last few weeks of the season was focused around football. So uh, whether that's me and um, AC having discussions around team selection, around performance, around tactics, around going to look at opposition, all of those types of things, and, and, and obviously from a playing point of view, then preparing, eating, drinking, uh, exercising in the right way to make sure they're in, in the best condition they can. To go to zero is, is, a, is a bit of a culture shock, um, but I suppose it's, it's more of a shock to them because my job doesn't tend to stop. Um, you know, you get to the end of the season and you know, we've already arranged pre-season, you know, a month or so ago. Um, we've already speaking to the players we want to speak to in terms of recruitment um, and that goes right through the summer so it's it is really quite a busy period to be honest with you for a manager more on the phone and, and organizing things rather than you know here on a match day or here on a training day that everyone else sees okay um so in terms of uh obviously new season will be here before you know it pre-season i guess we'll start what end of End of June, is it? As soon as Middle of June. Middle of June. Yep. Yeah. So uh, training starts back on the 16th of June um, with friendly, I think, starting early July um, through until obviously the start of the season. I think we've got eight, eight friendlies booked in and some challenging fitness sessions prior to that and in between those. So, yeah, it's, um, it'll certainly be a busy time and, and to be honest with you, I can't wait to get back to it. Okay, and obviously not announced yet, but you expect any big name clubs down here? Um, yeah, yeah, we are. You, 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 there's um, there's a couple of pro clubs that we we'll have here, um, as well as some high level opposition, um, and, and of course some teams at, at us and, and, and the level below us. So it's a good mix that we've got, and, and hopefully the, the games here against, I'm right in saying, pretty much all higher level, level opposition. So that should give people something decent to come out and watch. Okay, um, and then in terms of uh, who will be here when you start back in June, we've already had the announcement that Kirby Williams will be leaving us after um, the season. Surely m one of the most popular players to have been here for that short period of time, if you know what I mean. You know, he really is a superstar, wasn't he? Yeah, he's infectious. Um, it feels like he's been here a long time. Yeah. I don't know if he just does it. Up or what it is, but he's, um, you know, as you say, only been with us for a season, but it feels like a lot longer because he feels like almost part of the furniture. Um, we'd, we'd love to have him on board in some capacity and, and sort of remain ongoing with that, but you know, Curtly's wanting to spend time with family now. Um, you know, he's had his fair share of injuries over the time, and I think had we have won um, the playoffs and, and gone up, that would have been the fit. Do that for him, but you know, yeah, he's, he's going to be sorely missed around the place. Okay, um, anyone else we can expect to uh leave this this year? You know that, don't you? <laughs> yeah, um, so Geordie Matthews has unfortunately taken some time out. Um, it's 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 been been a long time coming, I think. I think I've known Geordie for several years now, and, and every year he's told me he's, he's going to take some time out, but I think that time's come where um. He's got a young family that's not quite so young anymore. They're, they're getting busier, and I know his daughter is um, very high up in, in what she does from a sporting perspective, so he, he spends a lot of time doing that, and I think it's just time now for him to take some time out, spend a bit of time with the family, and, and kind of reassess where he's at in terms of his football. Um, I think I had a conversation with him the other day, and... and I don't think he wants to say it's a forever thing as yet because I don't think he's 100% certain and um, much like myself when I kind of retired for the first time you, and, and I know Kurtley's been there, um, you do miss it and I think that 
you never say never to seeing him again in a Felix Stokes shirt. I mean, he's, he's certainly going to sign on for us again this season, and and if we need him, I'm sure he'll I'm sure he'll be there. But I think in terms of his, his regular place, you know, out there every week, I think that's um, put on put on hold for the time being. Okay, um, big part of last season, one of their successes was the the loan players you managed to bring in during the season, uh, like of Andre Asnali and. Um, oh, name's gone out of my head. Harry Knock. Harry Knock, of course. Yeah. Um, are they going to leave big holes, or, or is there a chance of maybe squeezing a few more loan players in? Yeah, so uh, we've got great relationships at, at both Ipswich and Colchester. Um, I'd like to think that, well, I know that, that both the lads really enjoyed their time here. Um, I think both professional clubs got something out of them being here. Um, and I'd like to think they, they progress. So I think it stands us in good stead for, for those um, that we perhaps speak to Ipswich or Colchester about this year, about them coming in, because I think that we've proven that they'll get game time, they can be trusted in the environment, and, and it's a good environment for them, for them to come and learn and play and, and get those minutes in kind of senior football that, that they need. So, yes, I, I certainly wouldn't rule out future loans for those clubs. Um, because I think it, it works for works for all parties. It works for the player, works for us, and works for works for the, the professional club loaning them out as well. Yeah, of course, it's out of the hands um, part of it because yeah, okay, some changes in Ipswich which has been obviously as in there put in and so perhaps that yeah. may new man coming in. Who knows? You know. Yeah, you know, but uh, a lot of the relationships I've got there are existing relationships and long term ones with 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 sort of Brian Klug and, and Adam Ate and those people, and, and then. Tony Humes and Sean Thacker and now Wayne Brown at, uh, at Colchester, of course. So I think that um, you know, coaches' movement within those clubs shouldn't shouldn't affect that too much because we're a good local club and and um, can stand our own right in in terms of being able to offer those players good good football. But I think you're right that they will create holes in the squad. You know, clearly we've lost Harriet and Curtly from the squad going into next season. So. Know, a centre half is a, is a position we're looking at, um, and, and Andre, you know, in that attacking third of the pitch, you know, we'll, we'll be looking to replace as well. Okay, so um, I know you always do. You always have targets, don't you? And you know, is there any anything you can say at the minute about any targets you may have? Absolutely zero. That's it. Um, <laughs> no, you know, it's clear to us looking at looking at the season. There was there was areas I think we can improve on. For me, that's fitness in terms of uh, staying fit so making sure we got the right type of player in that regard in terms of um, scoring goals didn't score enough goals for me so so we need to address that and that doesn't mean oh let's just bring in another striker it means um, that could be training methods that could be personnel that could be a whole, lot, whole realm of things that we can do to improve that and that's something we're, we're looking to do um, and then as, as I mentioned you know a centre half to replace outgoing players so yeah sort of centre half and, and those striking wide positions that are areas we're looking at okay. no worries um a bit early to say obviously but uh what, what would be your hopes for the season then uh, um sort of similar to this one where you sort of try and make those playoffs again or are you getting a bit hope yeah, a bit no, I, think, <laughs> I think it's very similar i think that um again again i'll set a target of trying to beat our points total from this year and I think if we do that we'll be in the playoffs um, and, that, and that's that will be very much our target again this year is, is to ensure that we get a good solid start to the season and then hopefully progress through and, and once again achieve kind of that top five which is I think where you need to be. Yeah and of course five new teams coming into the league of course which relatively unknown of course although some of them you know a few years ago friends if you like but there's a lot of unknowns coming into the league again although of course the league has lost a couple of toughies you know with Avening can be going as well so balances it out maybe yeah it does yeah you know it's it's um, good that Canby and Avely have progressed on and yeah it's it will certainly be another tough league you know with the likes of you know obviously lower stuff coming into it who will be, will be a good side next year with, with Jamie and Andy Reynolds up there so um They'll be they'll be tough. Goldston, Broxham, uh, you know, and 
all of the rest of the, the other teams and, and the one down near White Hart Lane that I've never heard of um, again will be an unknown but you, you get that and, and quite often um, they can be a surprise package much like you know Barking were in the first sort of seven eight games of the season this year hashtag you could argue that they've been a surprise package this season and have done really well so yeah it'd be another another tough year with some interesting challenges Okay. Um, obviously lots to look forward to then. One of the big things we're doing at the minute is trying to push season tickets. Um, crowds last year were great of course and we had some great crowds toward the end of the season. We suffered a bit from having no back holiday games of course and we lost a couple of high profile games like Friday night Sudbury, the Saturday Stone Market. Yes. When you add all those midweek games in it, it inevitably brings the crowd average down. Yeah. But that's such a huge part of uh, a club isn't it not just financially but from a team point of view it does raise them doesn't it so what would be your, you know anyone teetering on the edge of buying a season ticket what do you say yeah I just just encourage them to come down and give it a go because I know, I know there's a there's been a lot of kind of what you class as Ipswich converts over the last few years that have perhaps not seen what they want to down at down at down the road and and they've come over and loved it and and that's not me saying come over and watch us and not Ipswich. It's, it's. I think a lot of people probably don't realise how good non-league local football is and, and how close in it you can feel. Like I don't think it's totally different to the pro game where where you are separated from the players. It is at a distance and it's at arm's length watching. You you can be in and around the dugout and hear what managers are saying and, and talk to players and do all of that. And I think that's the good thing and the nice thing and, and why when I speak to a lot of our fans why they want to continue to come back and invite friends down and family members and I think um, if you're trying it for the first time give it a go because I think you'll love it. Yeah well I mean a little sales tactic the season tickets obviously offer such good value you can almost it doesn't matter if you've got an Ipswich one you can make this your second club can't you you know if you, if you gain if you come to half the games you're still in credit there I think so um, yeah exactly. Well, early bird sales are still on until the end of June, and uh, all the details online at phillyslefootball.co.uk. Well, thanks for meeting us tonight, and um, a bit too early, but good luck for the season ahead, and uh, yeah, thanks a lot.